Well, I am Margaret Foster, also known as Meg Foster, and I play the character of Cecilia Macaulay, also known as Cece. I am Omid Seiko Wisdom, known as Omid Wisdom, also known as Wisdom, also known as Jackson, when it comes to this movie, and that's the role I play. My name is Pamata Arwage. I'm the DOP of the film, meaning the guy that filmed the movie. Thanks. Can't have it all. Basically, the concept behind Can't Have It All simply relates to everyday life. Everyone out there is running up and down to make something for themselves and their posterity. And sometimes we forget to count our blessings as we're trying to grab everything. And in the process of trying to grab everything, you can lose what you already have. When you try to put so much things in your hands, obviously some things will drop. So it's nice, or it's wise, I would say, to address things as they come. To come like uh, all of them, basically. So that's the whole concept behind the movie. That's the message the movie is trying to um, portray, that in life you can't have it all. Where we have sto the story of four women and they're successful and they share a bond of friendship and everything. And um, with their husbands, their partners and all those things. But things happen that has their lives spiraling upside down in the process of them trying to have it all, well some of them. Well, um, basically, I would say in my own personal life, I manage to practice certain levels of independence because I don't think anyone is truly independent. We're all dependent on one another in one way or the other. And this is what makes you know life, gives life the balance. But um, relating to the role that I play with Jackson, See, you need to understand the character of my wife, Rosie, in the movie, played by Lilian Azizi. Rosie is a woman who's very hardworking, very determined, has a loving husband, but she gets overwhelmed with her work. She gets overwhelmed with her drive to be successful, that she begins to lose sight of other things that are important, like certain details in their marriage, certain details with their children and the well-being of their children. So I am portraying a husband who sees that in his wife and balances, you understand, supports the wife by understanding that this is her work. I have my own work as well, which is going very well, but I played the double role of also trying to fill up the gap where she's faulty. So this is in a way it's sending a message that even in real life, we husbands, we can play that role of being supportive to our wives or our partners and everything. But then what happens, it gets to a point where that drive goes beyond normality, beyond a normal state of, you know, being to the point where it begins to affect the marriage, it begins to affect our relationship, it begins to affect even the, the well-being of the children. So that's another, you know, that's another picture we're portraying. And when you actually take those directions towards trying to succeed to the point where you start losing balance, it can create problems, you understand? So yes, I am a very independent husband, but to a point which is like everybody else. Well, um, I didn't pick the role. Lillian actually thought that I would fit the role and she contacted, t contacted me like a while back via text, like that she's gonna shoot a movie and she thought I would be perfect in it, but she'll give me more details. So I think like a few weeks slash a month or so went by and I didn't hear from her, so I texted like, okay, um, are we still shooting the movie? She said yes, and I came to audition. Everybody was here and it was my first time reading out for a movie in front of everybody and 
and you know it went well because when I read the story like you said she's a personal trainer and I am in real life as well you know she uh, my character TC she loves herself she knows she looks good she works out she can pretty much you know have any guy that she wants and she just you know plays that game of like fatal attraction in a way so but also um, you know I relate a lot to her you know the, a lot of scenes that we have seen in the trailer with like um, uh, domestic violence and we have seen with like um, different forms of abuse because we did want it to enlighten the public also that this is not just a movie for fun but it's also teaching you know the the people that are watching it a little bit about what's happening in our society so a lot of people don't know about me as a personal trainer here maybe recently now they know that and I hope that it encourages like somebody else to want to see that as a career so CC and Meg have a lot of things in common but we also I also had to like pick some of the things out so I wouldn't be too carried away in the role because I am a person of my own and she is somebody that I played in the movie so yeah Lillian thought I was gonna be perfect for the role I came at audition and it was yeah it's been a blast since then Yeah. <laughs>Well, I play CC, and uh, CC is very feisty. And like I said earlier, she is a trainer. She knows she looks good. She can have any man that she wants. But she's also, you know, been in a troublesome relationship before. That's kind of changed her mentality on how she approaches relationships from now on. So she's a little bit guarded. So like I said, she dates often, but doesn't take relationships seriously. So you get to see her date around, have fun, and just, she's the life of the party as well. She, but she hangs out with the friends, she mostly is late, but fashionably late. And she doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be outdressed, and she is the life of the party. When she comes, everyone's like, oh, here she go again, but we still love her anyway. So she is, I feel like, she's a fun, bubbly person, and you know, works hard and like I said, we did tap into different um, different uh, sections, different things that we could talk about, that, that we could, you know, put into the movie, such as relationship, friendship, loyalty, um, yeah, betrayal and, you know, vi um, what's it called, domestic violence, etc. So I think it's a very educational film. First and foremost, Jackson is the man. You understand? He, Jackson is, uh, I play Jackson who happens to be just the, the presence, you understand? And um, like I said earlier, Jackson is this independent man, but to a point. And the breaking point comes when, um, you know, all these things are happening and he begins to obviously cheat on his wife. So he plays the character of a man who is a cheat, but based off, somewhat based off who he is, his nature, his past, his, you know but also just the circumstances. So I really enjoyed playing that character because I feel it relates to me as a person. I'm, I'm, I'm a musician, I'm young, and uh, you know, sometimes you have options when you're dealing with um, picking relationships and handling relationships, which I believe a lot of different people go through that as well. You know, and uh, the most interesting, one of the most interesting things about my character Jackson is his duplicity. It's how he's able to make his wife believe that she's the only thing that matters in the world. And in the same time, his side chicks do not even know that he's married. You understand? And he plays this character with so much smoothness, so much effectiveness, to the point where when the wife actually does get to find out that he's been, you know, having extramarital affairs outside, it's devastating. You know, even though she admits to her faults, to her being a bit absent here and there, a bit carried away with her passions and stuff, that it created that gap that, you know, pushed her husband away to a point. But she didn't believe that this particular guy would, you know, this particular man who is so caring, who is so loving, you know, opens the doors for her, gets her flowers, takes her to dinner. It's just a smooth angel, you understand? And, and it, the depth of duplicity, I think it's interesting because you can never really trust anyone, even the person that you're actually sleeping with on the same bed. So it also encourages things like communication, a message of having a thorough 
communication, you know, in a family, with your partner. I know you can never communicate enough, but these are some of the things my character is trying to portray. Understand? And there's so much for you guys to watch out for because every single scene that we all partake of carries messages, you understand? That's the fun bit, obviously, where she gets to slap <laughs> her partners. I get to slap my yeah, wife yeah. in the movie. But, 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 then, but then again, it's like she said, you know, there's the domestic violence um, message. It is the, you know, we're advocating against rape. And you know, we just, you know, we just want the movie to continuously, continuously touch on some of these topics that are relevant topics in our society which should continue to be, you know, something to be talked about, you understand? Because we have a great culture of silence in this country about so many things. So as we continue to keep the narrative going, it's important for the development of our society. I, I think some people, Lillian, already knew and felt like, okay, maybe, for example, um, Omid had like um, other people that were supposed to play Jackson, so they all came and auditioned. And I remember when we were doing the um, the audition process, I was here a lot, so I was seeing different people come in and audition for different roles. But I mean, mine was kind of secure because she knew what she wanted. She had this vision of what type of movie she wanted to make. So we've seen a few Jacksons, we've seen a few Yasalis and stuff, but then in the end, I feel like he fits perfect for that role. He has the character of carrying Jackson, the voice and the, and the maturity that the character needed. So, you know, we, we did put it out there, we put it out on social media, that, you know, we're looking for, um, we're having a casting for a movie, and sometimes people don't take things that you post seriously, and now when the movie is all done and the trailer's out and people are enjoying it, and like, oh, I wish I actually came when you guys called, or I wish I saw the flyer on time. So, you know, we had a cast, uh, casting call, people came in here and they auditioned, and then they finally, you know, picked who was suitable for that, uh, for the different roles that we play. I think they were like, 48 other actors and actresses, yeah. Well, I think 90% of the actors, mm -hmm. I'll say 90, <laughs> this is their first time acting. I would say that. Like acting in a movie, not on plays, but acting in a movie. 90% of the crew, I can even say 95, because I don't, I don't see anybody there who has been doing movies for ages, no. We're all new in it. I think it's Shirifo. Yeah. It's Shirifo, and, and Shirifo, I think him too, I think this is his first time doing this kind of big movies. So I'll say basically all of us had, because me, this is my first time shooting a movie. And a lot of people, I'll say Meg and Omid Wisdom, maybe this is their first time acting a movie, but you know, all of them are in the same areas, acting and all that, but movie, I think all of us, this is the first time. It was fun, nerve-wracking, exciting, like all of the emotions put in one because it's like I said, I've never acted, you know, in front of anybody or in front of, what we do at home on our phone is totally different, but once you have to do it professionally, reading a script and having to memorize it, I think that was like my main problem, like just reading the script. But once I got into it and I know who I was playing, it was easy because it's like, okay, you have to play Meg, but just add a little bit of extra something, something else, a little bits and bobs here and there. So it was fun. And Alex, you know, God rest his soul, he was also one of the casting directors and a very helpful person that worked with us. And he passed away um, a few months ago, so he didn't get to see the movie and everything that we've worked through. And, you know, he really helped me with the coaching because I had no coaching, no training in uh, movie making. I've, yeah, I do have like a little experience in musical theater because I did that in college, but like actual movie production and filming, no. So it is, it is exciting. It's something that who knows if there's a career out there for me. Yes, I would love to tap into it, but for now, I'm just enjoying Can't Have It All. I guess you can't have it all. <laughs> That courage and the equipment and let's say I think we're lacking a lot when it comes to f making good films that I'm seeing on Hollywood and other channels so this time um, when William came up with this idea so 
she said she wanna do a movie that's gonna be like an international movie that's gonna be like a Netflix standard and and you know Nollywood standard and even Hollywood standard. So in my mind, I said like, first of all, we don't have 4K cameras here to shoot a Hollywood or even a Nollywood standard. So she said she's like, at least willing to invest a lot in this movie based which just on equipment. So what I thought, well, I think if we have the equipment, I don't see any other reason why we will not be able to have um, the standard and quality movies that have been seen. Because Rosales is just acting. Yeah. Well, 4K camera, it's basically what everybody is using nowadays, except maybe Gambia, but other African countries are using 4K cameras because the reason for 4K cameras is it's more clear and it brings out every color natural as it is not even you don't even have to add color correction or even all this fake stuff but with a 4k camera i think you can have more clarity in images and it shows more than any other camera can show this movie has a very this universal appeal universal language well, obviously, with parental guidance, because not only the scenes, but I think the interpretation, yeah. you understand? Like, parental guidance is important because parents help younger people to interpret, you understand? But we've really, we've really made this movie in a way where anybody can watch it. It's easy to understand. So we expect everyone, you know, to be into it. We're talking Gambians. We're talking non gabbins There's a, a diversity in the movie, very diverse cast. We have 80% Gambians, but we have Lebanese people, we have Sierra Leoneans, Nigerians, Americans, Malawians. Everybody came. I mean, if we had aliens, we would have added them yeah. there, but unfortunately, we, we couldn't find <laughs> any. But yeah, but again, um, I've said this before somewhere. It's just real life because I think every one of us knows people. We are in a community with people from different countries, from different walks of life, different tribes, you understand? And we're just portraying that in the movie, how we just coexist, you understand? With people from different cultures and different norms. So the people who can come watch it, they will relate to it, seeing that, okay, I'm Gambian or I'm from Mozambique, or, but they will still relate, you understand, to the diversity that the movie is portraying. So yeah, it's for everybody, everybody. Oh, a lot of surprises. <laughs> a lot of surprises. I think Bamata has a scene where he's shooting under the water. <laughs> the camera under the water, you know, so. I mean, you just so many things. I mean, like visually, we have we're giving you guys something that I don't think we've seen in Gambian movies. Yeah, I was watching the trailer, and when the accident happened, and I'm like, oh my god, like did, did something happen to the car? <laughs> I was like, wait, when we were shooting this, it was totally different, but it, it looks so real and yes, so real. And yes, the yes. compliments we've been getting is literally about the the visual and the sound. Everybody's been saying, oh, it looks really good, and you guys really did good with the editing and the uh, and the um color correcting and we, we worked hard on it every time even if it took to so there were days when and we were shooting what during the Ramadan as well so imagine being hungry and fasting and shooting certain scenes as well you just sit in there like Lord pass me water but you know so there were times where it was a little bit frustrating because we had to reshoot over and over but most of the time it was fun everybody was a blast and I would definitely want to love would love to work with them again and I feel like everybody will enjoy the movie and we're hoping for it going to bigger places like Netflix, like even you know, Afri winning an African movie award, going to Nigeria. So we're hoping for the best. That's why we wanted to invest the time we did, find the right perfect cast for every role in this movie, and get the right directors. We had another director come in from Nigeria. He stayed here for almost three months and helped us shoot everything. So we want to give the best out there because the standard of where we see this movie going is high and we just wish that there was a industry here in Gambia that 
was serious. But then we, it has to start somewhere. If it means we start an industry by using this movie as a platform, that's what we're gonna do. So, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. We have to start somewhere. Well, we want everyone to come out and support us on the night, which is November 30th. Caraba Beach Hotel. It is going to be an event of the year. We're so, going to yeah. be having, um, translating the movie to the French language, obviously for our Foreign, people in the yeah. sub-region, yeah. Senegal and other French-speaking countries. So we're definitely trying to do the most that we can so that the movie gets to as many Reach people. As, because yeah. the movie is good. Yeah. It's been edited in Nigeria right now by you know some very key people in the Nollywood you know industry. Definitely. So the teamwork is great Definitely. you know from the director who came from Nigeria to our very able our Wage, Wage yeah. <laughs> who is about to be one of the next best international yes, directors and, and and you know the crew the cast everybody's just so there's a lot of fun into this there's a lot of love into this and you guys are just gonna feel it resonate yeah. definitely thank you all for having us and we hope to see you guys on the premiere shouts to Chronicle yes. for having us Thank Keep you. Keep watching Chronicle, because Omid Wisdom says so.